done the work, the more you can do whatever it is you choose anywhere in the world and have that level of confidence and certainty that each one of us thrives to get. I think it's very important that all of us work constantly to cultivate a sense of internal love and internal power, which most people don't have. Because you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. Everybody has a set of values in life, and these values dictate their destiny. And when you know your values and you set goals that are congruent with those values, you tend to increase the probability of achievement. What are your core values? Who are you being? What do you want in life? How are you going to make sure that as you're moving towards your success, you know who and whose you are and where you stand in the middle of this thing called life? Everybody needs a foundation in life and you need that go-to place in order to feel grounded, to reevaluate who you are and where you want to go. It's so important to know who you are, what your foundation is where you're coming from, and then know where you're going. This is the foundation that you want to have before you build a great edifice of a life. Now, the biggest single mistake that people make is they think that success should be easy, and they should be able to get it by thinking happy thoughts and rolling their eyes and getting into some get-rich-quick scheme. But all real lasting success takes a long time, and so you've got to build the foundation within yourself. You have to become the kind of person who can enjoy the success that you want to enjoy. So many people change homes often throughout their lives and are in search of that feeling of being at home. They move, they can never find it. They're never truly at rest. They seek different religions and spirituality, but they can never really find home because they never find contentment. Home can be either that place of environment where you come home to at the end of the day and you want it to be just a, a safe, comfortable atmosphere, calm, peaceful, energizing, whatever it would be, represent for you in the, in the real world. And home is also that place of coming home to self. Your home is an important place to start from. It's your springboard, it's your recuperation area, it's your grounding area, and whatever home is for you. Maybe it's your house, maybe it's your community, maybe it's your family, maybe it's your spiritual altar. You have a home you can always come back to and always springboard from again. That's what you can draw from. That strength from home, you'll be able to go out in the world and find your greatness. When we get into our home, we can find a place of security, a safe haven where we can be ourselves in spite of what is going on in the world around us. So a home, a place of your own, a place that belongs to you, is an essential part of establishing the foundation for motivation and high accomplishment. In design psychology, we say the home is the absolute basis of everything you do. Your surroundings absolutely affect how successful you will be and your progress. And what it is that you'll be able to do is based on your surroundings every morning, every night when you wake up. Is it energizing? Is it conducive to your goals? Because what is in your home is reflecting who you are. And what reflects who you are will come along the way with you all the time. Home is essential to your success. You need to have this little safety net, this little nest that you can go to, that you can rest in, that you can recuperate in, that feels safe for you to uh, rebuild your energy and your forces so that you can go back into the world and pursue your dream and follow your compass. The universe is my playground, the world is my home, and every country is another room in the house. And every city is another platform I can share my heart and soul. I really believe that this whole world is my home. And I believe having a foundation of a home that's global allows you to do things across the world.
when we talk about having a vision, what we're really talking about is having the absolute clarity and the instruction of what it is we want our brain to focus on. Your vision is your end game. Without it, there can be no direction, nowhere for you to go, nowhere for you to start, nowhere for you to end. Clarity of thought and clarity of the vision is essential. The clearer the picture, the more direct the path to get exactly what you want. The question is, what are you looking at? That's what vision is about. What you see when you look out at life and how are you going to move based upon what you see. Your vitality in life is directly proportionate to the vividness of your vision. Get extremely clear about your vision. Get the most intricate details that you possibly can, right down to how things will look, the feel, the smell, the colors, the motion, whatever detail that you can possibly imagine in your mind first, you can then take action on and make that become a reality. We are giving our brain the instruction of exactly what we want it to find in the physical world. We also put ourselves in a frequency to be able to resonate with anything that matches that vision. Your vision is a dream of what's possible. Your mission is the manifestation of the possible dream through passion. Well, visualization is a starting point because there seems to be a one-to-one -one relationship between how clear you are about what you want and how fast you move toward it and how fast it moves towards you. But it's not enough because then you have to do the work. Then you have to take the steps. It's good to have a clear idea of the mountaintop, but now you have to hike. Visualization is more of a first step. You visualize what you want, and then when you open your eyes, you take action. The action is what will lead to the completion of the very thing you've been visualizing. Who am I? What's my purpose? Why do I feel this way? Once I had answers, now only questions. I move forward not knowing exactly where I'm going, but in the direction of a fleeting feeling and an idea that I want for myself. The journey of my life has traveled three different directions. The directions have been governed by the data of my life, the judgment of my life, and the feeling of my life. My creation led to my confusion, because I was born with the last name Gay. And when you go to an all-boys school like Eton College, which is where the princes went to, with the last name Gay, it leads to a certain amount of confusion. Obviously, I had to act out, because I wasn't gay. So I had to act out. And so I started to disrespect people. I just disrespect girls, I disrespect myself. And the confusion led to the compromise. I was 34 when uh, the journey of my life shifted. Uh, I traveled from England to Australia to America. I was brought to the States by Cher, the rock and roll diva, the Oscar winner. She discovered me in Australia as her rock and roll promoter and sponsored me here to take her from cabaret to rock and roll. And at 34, I was living above the Hollywood Hills in a home built for Greta Garbo by the studio in 1920. I'd go down on a Friday night and play with my A-list rock and roll stars and my superstar actors. Even though my outside world looked incredibly fabulous, even though I had excess in the outside world, I lived in a world of rock and roll where 